Hi, welcome to the my first video for you in terms of uh, business analytics for managers. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, now, if you remember from the live session this morning, we talked about uh, uh, the business analytics methodology or BAM, uh, and we said that there was three basic stages to BAM. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at stage one, which is problem situation structuring. So if I just go to um, the first slide, so that there's the, the, the general um, uh, overview of, of, of BAM, if you like. So you can see we've got uh, three basic stages, problem situation structuring, business model mapping, and business analytics leverage, and that leads to the actual fourth stage, which is the actual implementation uh, of the analytics, which we'll, we'll do later in the week. So to, in this particular video, I'm going to talk about rich picturing, um, which is how we try and understand um, the basic situation. Um, so uh, problem situation, uh, situation, uh, situation structuring, really, really important. It doesn't matter what type of project you're doing. So at the start of any business analytics project or any project at all, uh, whether it's a strategy project or, or an analytics project or a problem solving project, I would always encourage you to do some uh, rich picturing. Uh, so uh, the situation that we face, um, it's going to be complex. There's, there's going to be interconnected issues. There's going to be all sorts of different types of information that are relevant to your project. Um, and we need to explore things like structure, uh, processes, stakeholder views, environmental factors. Uh, we need to look at the data. We need to understand the business model uh, initially and, and all those sorts of things. So um, that's quite difficult. It can make us feel pretty confused. Uh, it's often the most stressful bit of, of an analytics project because you're not quite sure what you're going to be doing yet. Uh, we need to talk things out in order to know what we want, why we want it and how we might achieve it. Uh, so there's got to be a dialogue uh, between you and your project team uh, and also with the client as well. Um, and rich picturing, uh, it can help individuals and groups make sense of challenging situations. Uh, so in this, in your project, you're going to be working online. Um, you're going to be working remotely. So uh, you're probably going to be doing your rich pictures individually, um, but that's absolutely fine. I, I always like to to do an individual rich picture when I'm doing a project. Um, now, problem structuring is is really important. Uh, I just want to mention a few sort of basic principles. So the first thing is that. Um, it's important when you're doing any sort of project uh, to try and step back and see the big picture. Okay, so when we step back and look at the big picture, we often can see uh, patterns which are not um, clear to us when we actually are quite close, focusing on the situation. So holistic thinking can help see patterns in, in the big picture. Um, the second thing that's really important to remember is that we all have different frames. Um, you know, we all have unique experiences. You know, we all uh, have unique uh, educational backgrounds. We all have different values. So we all have a different frame. We all have a different way of seeing a situation. Uh, and, and those frames that we have, they really determine what we see, they, they determine our approach to problems, um, and they also determine our ideas for solutions as well. So it's really, really important that when we're working in the team, that we, we create a little bit of space for everybody to sort of get a sense of what everybody else's frames are. Uh, and it's quite difficult to do that, and, and rich picturing is a really fantastic way of starting to see the, the, the subjectivity uh, in how different people will see a particular problem. So, in our rich picture, what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture key elements of the situation, but what might those elements be? So I've just put a little list uh, of things that you might want to think about when you're doing rich picturing. Um, so the first one uh, is the business model. Uh, now, I'm going to show you some more 
uh, formal methods for, for representing business models uh, in another session. Uh, but when we first look at a business, so when you first look at uh, Dogpool, uh, you need to start thinking about what, what's the business model uh, because the business model drives the analytics which are going to be valuable in the particular project that you're doing. So we want to start thinking about the business model, not, not in a very formal analytic way yet, but just just thinking about you know what, what what's the business about what you know what's the purpose of the business who are their customers you know what sorts of things are they doing um, in the business so that's that's the first thing the second thing is uh, stakeholders so any project that you do will involve stakeholders so they'll be people who work in the business they might be key customers they might be external factors um, they might be suppliers, they might be important people in the environment, all sorts of things. But we want to get a feeling for who those stakeholders are and try and understand what they're thinking. Uh, processes, so we might want to represent uh, the key processes that are happening in the business so we can understand how that business is functioning. Uh, so we can think about that. Um, now, we also need to remember, and, and I think this, this is something that we're not always very good at as anal analytics practitioners, is we have to remember that, that businesses are, are social systems, and so there will be uh, politics, uh, you know, senior managers in the situation will be involved in, in a political system, uh, and our project might be part of that political system to some degree. Now one of the good things about being an analytics practitioner is that uh, we don't tend to get too heavily involved in that uh, but we need to know that it's going on because it might affect our project. Now another important feature of, of the social system is culture. So culture is incredibly important uh, in, in all sorts of management and it also can affect our, our business analytics project as well because uh, the culture is really about um, the sorts of norms and values that you find in a particular business. And it's important to remember that uh, we tend to think of culture as being relevant to differences between uh, countries. So we might think, oh, the, the, the culture in China is different from the culture uh, in Spain or uh, it's different from the culture in the USA. Uh, but of course, you need to remember that even within the same country, there will be differences in culture between different businesses. So you might have two businesses who are in the same industry delivering the same service. And one may be, you know, very ethical, uh, very law abiding. And another one might might be unethical and, and actually taking a lot of risks and, and, and not behaving ethically. So all sorts of variety can occur uh, between businesses. So we need to start to get a feel for the business that we're working with. Now another thing that, that's important to, to, to remember is that often you know, within an organization, uh, the manager that we're working for or the managers or, or, or um, the team of people that we're working with will be under a lot of uh, pressure. You know, there's a lot of information overload these days. Uh, so we might find that, that managers actually are quite uh, confused about certain things. So we need to take that into account when we're trying to develop our project. And that can be especially the case when it comes to understanding databases and sources of data. You may find that the managers actually don't understand that very well. Uh, now, another thing that's important um, in, in this type of uh, project and, and in all projects is that, you know, that there will be different ideas, you know, uh, and there will be different strategies being employed by the business. And we need to understand those strategies because um, analytics, you know, one of the things that I, I want you to take away from the, this module is that there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of of analytics that we can do as as uh, analysts and we have to select 
those particular analytics which are relevant to this particular business and which will be valuable. You know, we can't, we don't have time to do all of them. Um, so we have to select those particular um, uh, tools and analyses which are going to actually add value to that particular organization. Uh, another thing that's important is that all organizations, all businesses are unique and they have their own unique history. And one of the best ways of understanding a situation is to try and get a sense of the history of that business. Uh, now, I'm not saying that you sit down and, and study all the documents and, and spend a lot of time on this, but talk to people, try and get a sense of, of the history of the situation and that'll help you understand what's going on and obviously you know in in any sort of data analytics project there is the data that's available within the organization now all organizations have quite a lot of data some organizations have a lot of data these days but just because an organization has a lot of data doesn't mean that that data is is what you want or it's useful so um you know, one of the, 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 the sort of arduous tasks uh, of any sort of analytics project is having a look at the data and trying to work out whether that data is actually going to be useful for you. Uh, you may find that, for example, you wanted customer data, but when you go and look at the customer data, you may find that that customer data is in the wrong format. So perhaps you need it sales per day or sales per week, and it's just sales per year. And so it's just useless to you. So there's a lot of issues around data quality as well. And, and organizations are finding these days that that um, their data isn't quite as good as they, as they thought it was or they hoped it was. Um, now, the tool that we're going to use for, for this step one is um, rich picturing. And it's a, it's a very simple tool. It's just a cartoon-like representation of the problem situation as a whole uh, and you try and record organizations, stakeholders, processes, relationships, culture, issues. You try and record everything that you think um, seems significant for that particular situation. Uh, you can express different points of view and you can try and articulate conflict between stakeholders. Um, now you can draw pictures yourself as a facilitator, if you're interviewing someone, for example, or you can do it all together in a group. Uh, so I've got a few examples. So let's just have a look. Um, now, um, you can do it individually. So uh, I might draw a rich picture on my own to help me understand things, but I might do it with a team of people. They take about between 10 minutes and three hours, you know, depending on how you know, seriously you take it and how hard you're trying to capture and uh, all of the information. They should be fun. You know, when we do it in groups, we often get quite a lot of fun. You, you'll hear people having a laugh and joke, normally because people are embarrassed about their drawing. Uh, and so they get embarrassed and that makes them laugh. But it actually doesn't matter if your drawing is not brilliant because all we're trying to do is use it as an exercise to understand uh, what's going on. So the objective is to let people express their views, to try and pick up on different views within the team and try and identify key issues. Uh, you're trying to get people to step back from the situation uh, and you're trying to make sure that all aspects of the situation are represented and you're trying to capture the feel of the situation. Now it, rich pictures are individual to the person who draws it so it's very difficult to actually understand somebody else's rich picture. So the value of rich picturing is really to the person who draws it or the team of people who draws it because they are the ones that understand what it means. Um, so here's an example. This is a rich picture that I drew for my own benefit uh, when I was doing a project for the Department of Transport. Uh, now this is quite a, a tidy rich picture because this rich picture has been redrawn uh, in order to be put into a report for the client. Uh, so the original was quite a bit scruffier. I'll show you an original uh, in a minute. So here's another, this was a, a rich picture I drew again for myself. 
for this was a project for a very small uh, retail uh, organization. Now, this is a, an important uh, slide because this shows an original rich picture. So this is the absolute original drawing that a group of four people produced. And uh, this took them about an hour. So this was this was the strategic situation of a local authority organization and these are the actual people who draw that drew that picture and you can see they're all interacting on that picture all participating which is exactly what you want and you can see if you notice there you can see a flip chart um, and that's where we ask the people to list the issues because that's really important to to make a record of what you think the issues are in that particular situation. Now um, you're in luck because Chris Mortimer, who's who's uh, the module leader for 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 this module, uh, and who you've already seen this morning uh, and, and none of the videos, has done um, one of his super videos uh, on YouTube. So have a look at that. It's called "What Is Rich Picturing: Six Tips to Get Started with Rich Picturing." Um, well worth having a look at that video and, and Chris explains in more depth why rich picturing is such a great tool. Now uh, the other tool which I'd like you to do is something called stakeholder analysis which is where we look at the individuals involved in the project in a little bit more detail. So for example who's the client and you need to be thinking what is the client's point of view both of the situation but also of the project as well. Uh, secondly, who is the project? You know, who is, who will participate in the project team? And it's very important to achieve participation in in the project. So, obviously, for you, the key people in are your uh, study group, and me uh, and Chris obviously are also involved in your projects as well, uh, and also the client Natalia uh, is also to some degree involved in your project. And then stakeholders, these are key people, as I said before, who are involved in the situation in some way. Uh, we need to understand you know, who they are and what their role is. And we can do a little analysis, uh, if you like. We can ask ourselves, for each of the key stakeholders, we can ask, you know, what's their level of interest? Is it high or is it low? And what's their power over your project okay is it low or is it high so for example um, people with high levels of interest and high levels of power uh, these are key players and it's really really important that we, we are aware of these people and keep these people satisfied uh, people with low levels of interest but high power then we keep them uh, informed and satisfied uh, people with high level of interest but low power we just keep them informed because they're unlikely to have a big impact on our projects. People with low interest and low power, well, we, we don't need to worry too much about them. So those are the two uh, tools that I'd like you to, to get involved in uh, in day one of this module. So a rich picture and uh, the stakeholder analysis. So for the case study, um, for the dog pool case study that we're going to be working on each day this week, uh, I'd like you to have a go at drawing a rich picture and thinking about the stakeholders. Um, so uh, I would suggest that you do those rich pictures individually uh, uh, this afternoon or, or when you've got uh, some time. And, and also you, you might want to discuss it in your project meetings uh, uh, on, on the first day of the project uh, or, or, or on, on another day. Okay, so that's the that that's everything for this first video. I hope that made sense. Uh, you'll find the, the the slide pack for for this video available uh, on my WBS. So please go and find that, uh, and you're very welcome to obviously uh, look at that while you're watching the video. If there's anything in the video uh, that that didn't make sense, of course you can ask Chris or me, or you can watch the video again. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Speak to you soon.